All right, in this video, we're going to look at how to make a protractor in KOWP. But before we do that, I got to show you my new setup. I did get me a Apple iMac 21 and a half inch. It's a powerhouse compared to what I have been using for the past many years. Um, I also got me the Logitech keyboard instead of the, uh, I like this better than the Magic Keyboard that Apple provides. I like the number pad over here that you cannot get. Um, with the Magic Keyboard, as well as this thing is solar powered, so there's no batteries. It's freaking awesome. And then I also got the Samsung Meteor mic. That's what you can hear me on now. This is half the price of the other mic that I was debating on getting, which was the Blue Yeti. Um, I wasn't looking to spend crazy amounts of money on a mic, and this one does just fine. I did check out some YouTube videos where people were comparing the Blue Yeti to the Samsung Meteor mic, and you know you couldn't even really hear a difference between them. So half the price, same quality. You can't argue with that. And then also what you're watching me on now is the Logitech C920 HD webcam. It's perfect for this tutorial because I'm going to show you how we're moving the phone to get the angle measurements. And plus, this is going to be beneficial to my students that I tutor online or video conferencing or what have you. Um, you know, all this stuff that I have here, I could not have gotten this as fast had it not been for your help. Whether you're purchasing my apps off the Play Store, making donations over at my website, uh, the monetized ads, you know, all of those contributions uh, are helping or have helped me get this much faster than I anticipated. <laughs> yeah, I still had to come out of pocket quite a bit, but nonetheless, you know, thank you so much. Um, I'm excited about it. I, I love the new computer. My son loves it. We watch YouTube videos of colors and shapes and counting and letters. He, he's learning a lot and he's 27 months old. He can already count. He can do his ABCs. He knows his colors. He knows his shapes. So um, we get to spend some family time here as well. And, uh, but the main, the, you know, the main purpose of this computer here now is to provide uh, better quality YouTube videos. And hopefully now, you know, the audio quality will be better as well. I am able to export videos and at the same time still work on other stuff, multitasking, whether it be checking email, uh, making the thumbnails for the videos or what have you. Uh, my MacBook Pro would definitely start to slow down uh, because of the RAM and the processor or whatever. But uh, with all that said, thank you all so much. And now let's get into this KLWP tutorial. As you can see here, I'm using the back of my phone as like the place where I want to measure my angle. So, you know, near vertical, I'm getting it up there close to 90 degrees. And then if I start sliding it like that, the angle does change. So if you want to find the angle of something, you know, you set your phone up against it. And now I'm holding my phone at an angle right now, but roughly that's around 30 degrees. If I set it down flat, you may notice that it goes a little bit past zero down here. And the reason why it's doing that is because this table, this surface is not perfectly flat. It's doggone close to it. But as you can see, as I move this around, notice this thing goes, it says a D1 and it says zero. See that? See how it says a D1 then it says zero? Well, D1 means down one degree, or that's how I'm interpreting it. That's why this needle is a little bit below zero here. But it's still pretty accurate, and plus we're not doing rocket science with this, so uh, hopefully it will, be, it will meet your needs should you need to use this. Um, I definitely, I'm a math instructor, so I can show this to my students, and they may find that this is pretty cool. Who knows? So going into KOWP, what we have is three pieces to this. We have a needle, we have the marks, and we have the numbers. The needle is just this white rectangle that you cannot see, but you did see it animating a moment ago. Its width, I have it set to the entire width of the phone screen. Uh, also, uh, the height, you can adjust this to your liking. Uh, the color, but the main thing to take note of here is the animation. We are animating this based on a gyroscope, and I have it set to rotate on the Y axis. That is important to select the Y axis um, based on the way I'm doing it like this. Now, if you wanted to do it like this, you'd have to, I think, maybe adjust the X and, uh, the, you know, play around with it. The Y is what gets this type of movement right here going on. And also very important to animate this thing, the anchor needs to be module left. So it's going to be the left side of this rectangle. That's what keeps it kind of centered there and the needle moves like this to give you that angle measurement. So there's our needle. Now let's go look at the marks. The marks are, I got two pieces inside of this overlap group. They're both progress 
and I have the 10. So I got 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, but that's not the actual numbers right now. What I'm showing you right now are these longer tick marks on this protractor. I have it custom, min is 0, max is 100. I have the current level set to 26. Now, as you can see, when I take these away, let me bump this back up. Um, the reason why I have it set to 26 is because I had to put it, I think, yeah, you can't really see it right now, but 26 is what gives me that other line down here at zero. Let's see if 25 will. Let me save that, go back to the home screen, see how we're missing the line on the zero there. But if I go back and adjust this to 26, that's what's going to give me uh, that longer line at zero. And then obviously we have one up here at 90 degrees. Uh, other things to note, split progress, 36 sections. The reason why we want 36 is because truly this progress is a circular progress and there's going to be 36 of these sections that go all the way around in this circle. And it's important to use 36, even though right now we're only seeing 10. We got this one, 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 all these long ones. Those are the only ones we want to see. That's why I have that level set to 26, roughly one fourth of it. The offset 355, in, in playing around with this, as you can see, the little longer tick marks are moving, but 355 is what's going to put it, uh, let's see how that looks. Is 355 actually where I want it to be? Um, 355, I'll tell you what, let me go back and I need to adjust that a little bit. It needs to be 355.5. I remember doing that a while ago. Now, if I save that and go back to the home screen, you will notice that these longer tick marks fall right on the tens. They cover up the little one that's behind this thing. Okay. So that's how we set up the 10 marks. What you're going to have to do also, the style is going to be circular, adjust your size, width, and height accordingly, color, and then position. I just have it set to center. But whatever size, you want to kind of keep that in mind when you go to make the smaller ones as well. So you could just copy and paste it for the ones. These are going to be the smaller tick marks. And I'm going to point out something else to you about the color. The min zero, the max is 100. The level is at 25%. We have a full circle coming around this thing. And to show you that, this is the same thing applies to these 10 marks, these longer marks. But right now I'm doing the smaller ones. If I come and just uh, pop this out and I'm going to do some left padding. So we're talking about these marks here. This thing does complete a whole circle, but we don't see it. And the reason why is a couple of things. I have the progress. The level is 25%. If I bump this up, notice like um, you can now see more of those lines coming up through here. But I want to keep that at 25 right there. And that's giving me a quarter of this circle. Okay. Well, how am I keeping these other ones away? That's the color for the background color. If I go here and change this to like a yellow, you can see the other pieces, but I don't want to see those. I recommend making these transparent. That way you can line up this quarter circle here, if you will. You can line it up correctly with, um, you know, the corner down here to make everything look right. So that's why I hide the background color. And let me go back in here and fix my padding. And put it right back down there. Okay. So there is our tens and ones. And again, the tens does the same thing with that color piece. You know, I'm hiding all the other colors that are back here by making the background color transparent. And one more thing about the marks too. These two pieces right here sitting inside of the overlap group. The position of that overlap group, I have it set to bottom left. And you will definitely need to tweak uh, the marks um, to get them, get them where you want them, obviously, but, uh, somewhere right around there, depending on your size, your numbers may be different here. Now, the last part is numbers. Numbers is going to be a series and the series I have is set to custom and I want to count backwards from 90 back to zero and I want to go by tens. So 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and zero. The way we can do that is inside of this, uh, what is it called? Inside of the formula, the way we can get 90 to show up first, 
Now, 90 has an index. This, the first item in this series is gonna have an index of zero. This has an index of one, index of two, index of three, index of four, etc. So the formula here is this. Since I wanna get 90, 90 is that first number I wanna get, its index is zero. So if we take the index plus one, that gives us one, times 10 gives us 10, and then we take 100 and subtract that 10, that's how we get 90. <clears throat> Excuse me. How do we get 80? 80 has an index of one because it's the second item in our list. So 80's index is one. One plus one gives us two. Two times 10 is 20. 100 minus 20 gives us the 80. Now this would continue on uh, this, the way this formula works, it gives us all of these numbers and then we have to set current to nine. If I set current to like eight, watch what happens. It takes away the zero. If I set current to seven, it's gonna take away the zero and the 10. You see how we're losing those numbers down there? So I'm gonna set current to nine. So the way I think about it like that is, I want to have 10 items in this series, uh, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and zero. That's 10 items. And since the zero is the first one, we go up to the max. Our maximum that we want here is nine. So zero to nine gives us those 10 items showing. So current's nine, the count, I, you have to adjust this. You might need a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on your size. Notice I had it originally set to 32. You can take this, and the reason why I didn't want 32 is because that's gonna take that 90 completely off the screen. And also I'm finding right around here, roughly, I can do some more adjustments to make this a little bit more perfect. But the 90 starts here, and then we do a quarter of a circle and we go around to zero. Cause you may have like a 90 to zero showing you know, only for a small part. Well, it comes with adjusting this and uh, also adjusting your style. Circular, fixed spacing, and these are the numbers that worked for me. Now, there's no animations or anything like that, but what you will have to do is position these numbers. I also have them positioned in the bottom left, and right now, as you can see, these numbers are kind of random, but by me positioning those, you can see that we are, uh, you know, the 90s cut off a little bit, the zeros cut off a little bit. And there you have it. That's how you can create a protractor in KLWP. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.